Hello and welcome to Library Drawing Party. Today we're going to be drawing this beautiful tree. To get started, we're going to put a lot of water on our brush and use some dark brown. We're going to start in the center of the canvas and draw the trunk. I'm putting down a light coat so that we can layer colors on top. And then let's work on the branches. So we have a long, almost C-shaped branch coming off to the side. It's always going to be thicker by the trunk. Then we have one that comes up to the top of the page with a little bit of a curve. And then there's another one that comes up a little further on the trunk that goes off to the side of the page, also with a little bit of a curve. If your brush starts to get dry, you're just going to want to add some water to that. Then go straight up. And there's a vertical branch next to it. And there's another one on the side with a little bit of a curve and a second branch right next to it. Then there's another C-shaped one to the side and then one that connects with the corner of our canvas. And then we just want to connect all of these branches we want to leave some light color for the hole in the tree, which maybe has an owl living in it. You can put a dot there and then put in some more color around it. Then I'm going to work with my green. I want to start, I'm going to actually start with yellow before I add in any green. Because I want the grass to really be highlighted. Now I was using some green when I used my yellow last. So it's a little bit of yellow green already. You can either put straight yellow on here or you can mix a little bit of green in it to get this yellow green color. And I just want that to go to the bottom of the page. Okay, now I'm going to take a light green and mix that in with my yellow. You don't have to completely mix it in. Some variation in the color is good. Gives it some texture and some visual interest. I'm going to also take a slightly darker green, add that in. If you only have one shade of green, you can use water to add lighter and darker shades. Okay, now that I have my grass established, I want to draw the tree line in the back. So I'm going to take a dark green that has some hints of blue in it. So if you don't have this dark green, you can mix some blue and green together. It's going to be more green than blue. So you can think of it like two parts green, one part blue. So for every dab that you have of the blue, you're going to want to do two dabs of green with your paintbrush. 
Then I'm going to take my dark brown that I used for the trunk and I'm going to mix that in the bottom and this will help establish a horizon line. We do want this to mix in with the green and you can even use some of the lighter green. Mix that in. Give it a bit more variation. And add some more of this down by the bottom of the trunk. Maybe it's like a moss or a shrub. Then I'm going to take my medium green and add in some leaves. So I'm taking a relatively dry brush. If your brush gets too dry, you can always just add some more water. And if you're concerned that when you add water, you're adding too much water, you can always clean some of it off on your tissue or paper towel or rag. Just make sure if you're using a rag that you only use it for your art projects. You don't want to be eating off of your watercolors. So I'm adding this green color all near the branches and a little bit outside of the tree because there might be branches that we can't see and so on. Then I'm going to take my dark green and add in some leaves with that. So I'm using the side of my brush and I want to see the brush because that's the shape of my leaves. I'm using a flat brush for this but you can probably use a rounded brush as well. Then I'm going to take my light green. So if you don't have a light green, you can mix in some yellow. I'm going to add that. We don't want to mix it too much because we do want to see our brush strokes for the texture. This just gives it a little bit more color. You can even take some of that yellow we used in the beginning and add in some dots for sunshine. Now I'm going to take my light blue and paint in the sky background color. And I want to make sure I'm keeping as much texture of the leaves as I can. So I want my brush to be pretty dry so it's not bleeding into our leaf color too much. This will help tie in the blue-green, especially along the tree line. Okay, so we have our base coat layer of watercolors. I want to add another layer of watercolors. So I'm going to go back to the trunk and use that dark brown that we started with. You want to keep your brush dry. And I'm going to add in more vertical lines that have slight curves and slightly diagonal 
to give it some texture on the trunk. Then go back in and add some more texture to the branches. We want the branches to be a little bit disjointed because we wouldn't be able to see all of them because they're getting blocked by view from other branches and from the leaves. So I'm using broken lines here to describe the branches and it also adds some texture. They get thinner the further away they are from the trunk. So we want to be mindful of that, making sure that it gets wider as it gets to the trunk, but we never want the branch to be wider than the width of the trunk. The trunk is always going to be the widest part of the tree. You can use some black for some shadow, particularly underneath the branches. I'm also going for a bit of an impressionist style here, which is where you focus on the color and the brush strokes so that Everything is about the light and the way that the light is playing off of the colors and the directions of the lines. Which is also part of the reason why I have why I have more of a dabbing technique with my brush. I'm gonna go in and darken the horizon line and I'm going to fade out to the top so I'm not adding any color or water I'm just letting the brush fade out by using up the color, putting the most color towards the bottom and then working my way up. Add in some more yellow highlights in the grass. And in the trees. We want the trunk and the branches to be the darkest part because it's almost like a silhouette of the tree. The light is coming from behind. We can use some more of that dark green because we want the leaves to be silhouetted too. And I'm going to paint right over the branches and the trunk because the leaves would come in front of the branches, but we would still see the branches in the background. I'm going to add some medium or mid-tone green, which is standard green on your rainbow watercolor set. By adding more layers, we get a darker tone, which is perfect for what we're going for. And it also gives you some more texture. Which creates visual interest. And add in some more sunshine with my yellow. Go 
don't want it to be peeking through the leaves. So once you're done with your second coat of watercolors, you can either stop here or if you want to keep going, you can use colored pencils. If you have a watercolor colored pencil set at home, you can use that right away. Otherwise, you just want to wait for this to dry and then you can add in regular colored pencils afterwards. So I'm going to use a dark brown because I really want the inside of my trunk to stand out. And I'm going to use a black for some shadow. I'm going to also use the black for the horizon line. And I'm using a jagged line here. Because I don't want it to be perfectly smooth. I'm going to use a green to blend it in with the green that we already worked with. This will just give it a bit more definition. I'm going to use the dark brown to hint at some roots. And I want this to be just hints so I'm not going to draw thick roots. I'm just going to have little pieces of brown peeking out of the grass. I'm going to also use that dark brown to add in some more lines to our branches and tree trunk. Since the branches and tree trunk have lots of texture. I want to be mindful of this initial layer here because I want the space around the hole in the tree to be lighter so that we notice that feature of this tree more. I'm going to be using a lot of vertical lines but mainly I want to follow the lines that I was already creating. By doing colored pencils I'll have a little bit thinner lines. And you can even add in some smaller side branches coming off of the big branches. Colored pencils are great for these smaller branches because you can get really nice thin lines. I want to have a little bit thicker one here. We can use some black like we did with the watercolor for underneath. And they can even be some of the smaller branches. Add some more black to my trunk. And I'm going to take a dark green. I'm going to add in some leaf shapes. I'm going to make sure that the leaves are coming off of branches. So I'm drawing 
bit of an oval with pointed edges. But depending on which tree you're drawing, if you have a specific tree at home, you might want to grab a leaf off of the tree or one that has fallen and use that as a guide. You can also do some research. We have some great tree encyclopedias at the library. It can tell you about the trees throughout the seasons because the trees change throughout the year. The leaves that I'm drawing now are not going to be there in winter unless this is an evergreen. And they'll change in the fall so you can see what color it changes to in the fall. Perhaps it turns orange or red or yellow or a mix of the colors. It's important to know what season you're working with. Right now I'm working on a late spring, early summer tree. Add in some more texture in the background here. I'm doing a bit of cross hatching, which means that I draw diagonal lines and then I do diagonal lines in the opposite direction. You can also do vertical lines with horizontal lines. Now I'm going to take a lighter green and add in some more leaves with my lighter green. I want these to be closer to the edge because when you're looking at the silhouette, usually the lighter piece is on the edge and it gets darker towards the center. We have lots of resources about trees in the library. We have the encyclopedias that I was talking about, but we also have instruction manuals on how to grow trees, including fruit trees. And we have a very in-depth gardening section, both in print and in our virtual collection. We also have some magazines lots of material so if you're looking to improve your garden or your landscape we have plenty of resources for you at the library and if you ever need help with that you can always check with your local reference department or reference desk I'm just adding in some green throughout to blend it a bit I'm going to use a light brown for a highlight on the top of the branches. I'm going to use this sparingly because I really want the dark colors of the silhouette to stand out. But this can add in a bit more of a warmer tone, which is good since we have so many cool colors in this drawing. I actually want to add 
one last touch of watercolors in my sky blue. And even add in a little bit darker blue this way. Looks like we have some clouds in the background. And there you have it. That's our tree. Thank you for joining us in this week's library drawing party. We have a library drawing parties every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And keep being creative.